Hey there, Dr. Daniel Lopez here today. And, and today I want to talk to you about fascial imbalances that pull the tongue into the airway. So a lot of times people who have obstructive sleep apnea, when they sleep on their back, their, their tongue falls and, and jaw collapse into their airway. Now, we blame gravity for a lot of this, but it's not the sole reason that this is happening. And there are other pieces of this that are important to understand. So uh, that we can understand what, what is happening because someone, if, if we relied solely on gravity for our tongue to come back down after we swallow, then we wouldn't be able to swallow properly when we're laying down or even upside down or, or any situation like that. So, uh, but, but we can. So then we, there's, there's, there's more going on. And to me, this is a piece that is really hasn't been uh, paid attention to or isn't hasn't been well understood so I'm going to try to describe it uh, this is something that I that I have uh, an idea that I've come across and I've discovered and so I want to talk about this uh, if you want to learn more you can go to I have a uh, blog post and I'll put a link to that below this directly below this video but what we're talking about here is is this balance of tension so the the fascia this connective tissue that's continuous with the tongue is actually anchored to the cranial base on the undersurface. So let me get, get a skull here and I will show you what I'm talking about. So uh, in this area here on the undersurface of the skull is where that fascia that is continuous with the tongue is anchored into. And then that fascia flares into the mouth, envelops the tongue and then attaches onto the hyoid bone. That's a horseshoe shaped bone that lies right about here on um, under the under the jaw and then that fascia then continues down into the chest and, and it becomes part of your endothoracic fascia that means it's lining the inner surface of your um, of your rib cage and then also envelops some of your is or envelops the organs in your rib cage so it can help it forms part of the fibrous pericardium which is the, the sac around your heart develop some of your lungs, anchors them into the diaphragm, and then continues, that fascia continues down into the abdomen. And so the reason this is important to understand is because there has to be this balance of tension from the, the attachment above into the cranial base and then the anchoring into the diaphragm and, and elsewhere below into the rib cage and diaphragm and elsewhere below. So the anchoring below into the rib cage is much stronger than uh, than from above so if if we take that this fascial plane and, and we tighten it up and make it make it shorter then things are going to be compressed and what's going to end up happening is that things are going to be pulled from below downward and and so with uh, and that, that's what happens when we have an imbalance with this tension. So that's, that's under normal circumstances, there's plenty of slack. So someone can have good posture and uh, they, they don't struggle to have their tongue rise up and down as they swallow. Now let's talk about when things go wrong. The most common factor that I've, that I've found that really throws off this balance of tension is, is tongue, a, tongue, a tongue tie. And so what a tongue tie does is essentially, like I was saying before, there's normally some slack in this fascial layer from above and below so that you can have good, good motion. And what this tongue, the tongue tie does is it takes the slack and it winds it up. And based on how severe it is, it can wind it up uh, tighter and tighter. And so that can pull the base of the skull down into a forward head posture. I, I mentioned this in another article. Or this can also be a, a, a reason for a tongue thrusting where someone can't get their tongue up so they have to make up for and compensate for that by swallowing by pushing their tongue outward towards their towards their teeth and instead of their tongue coming up and down they, they push forward and back and that's that's how they manage to compensate for that but there's another dangerous piece of that uh, that hopefully you've, you've come to understand and that's when we're sleeping so when a person is is, is relaxing during sleep the muscles that would help them compensate for this imbalance of tension suddenly are going to relax and then what ends up happening is if the balance point has then moved lower you've got increased tension from below and it's pulling down 
then the tongue and jaw are going to be pulled into the airway and you're going to collapse into it. And that's going to be true regardless of the position that you're sleeping in. Whether you're on your back, that's going to be definitely worse in that scenario. But whether you're on your side or not, you're still going to be uh, potentially uh, having your tongue pulled into the back of your throat. So the next question then is, how do you know if you have a fascial imbalance? So uh, in, in another article and video I, I, before, I've, I've shown uh, a test that takes up the slack from from this fascial pull from below, it, 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 uh, and it tightens up that slack. And if you, if you have slack there, uh, plenty of slack, then you won't have any trouble doing this. But if you have, say, like that imbalance, that your things are really strong, strongly pulling from below, then you're not gonna be able to do this. And what you do is you, you can do it sitting, you arch your back, you tilt your head back, and then with your mouth closed, uh, you see if you can swallow. And if, if you have, basically taking up all the slack when you do that and you try to swallow your tongue is physically unable to rise and fall and so then that it can be indicative of a of, of a tongue tie but it's also indicative of this extra tension in uh, in this fascial layer in, in, into the rib cage so uh, next question or next part about it is like well what can you do about it let's say you you're listening to this and you you're thinking well maybe I have this problem what can I do about it and the first thing I would do is I would get evaluated for potentially a tongue tie lip tie any any tethered oral tissue so you would want to look up a myofunctional therapist uh, perhaps near you or online that that can then help evaluate that for you but then if you do have it you'll want to you want to then go see, potentially get a release and uh, find you know your myofunctional therapist should hopefully be able to help you find somebody who would be good for that but in, in addition to all this, proper body work is important because uh, then that can help to release some of this endothoracic fascia, this, this fascia in, in the chest and in other places that can then help to improve the outcome of, of, the, of the fascial uh, tension from below. So we can at least get some of that fascia, that fascial tension resolved, and then that can help too. So... Um, you, what you want to do is you want to find somebody who is aware of this, who can treat the tongue, for example, who can treat the fascial layers in the neck and the chest and, and knows about them enough to be able to do this. And there aren't probably a lot of people that are really well versed in this, but, um, but it is something that, that ideally you'd want to try to find. So uh, just to, as, a, as, a con, as a, some last thoughts, uh, I've, I've been describing what I think is a novel way of explaining why the, the tongue and jaw collapse into the airway when we're sleeping, not dependent on gravity and what position you're in. And then we, we talked about the, the, we talked about how the, the fascia uh, above uh, the, the tongue can get and, and from down, it gets anchored down below. So if you shorten that, that and, and make that more tense, then things are going to get compressed down and, and will make it harder for your tongue to rise up and, and come back or to rise up when you're swallowing. So then that can cause problems such as, uh, forward head posture and, and uh, tongue thrusting. So uh, then we just described the, the, the test on, on what to do for this. And then lastly, we talked about what you can do about it, getting evaluated, things like that. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you enjoy my material, please subscribe to my channel and then um, and feel free to leave a comment. Feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see you in another video.